In this video, we're going to look at pages 1 to 4 of Stephen Shreve's Stochastic Calculus for Finance, Part 1. We will introduce the one period binomial model and understand how to use it for setting up a replicated position for a European call option in the stock and money market. So, on the first page of the book, we're introduced to the one period binomial model where the value of S0 represents the price of the stock today and the price of the stock at time 1, tomorrow, is denoted by S1H and S1T. So the price tomorrow is determined by a theoretical coin flip, where heads will multiply our stock price by a factor of U, which stands for up, and that's going to be greater than 1, and tails will multiply the price by a factor of D, which stands for down, which is going to be less than 1. So we're also given the probabilities for both heads and tails, where heads is denoted as P and tails is Q, which is also 1 minus P. So therefore, we know the probability of the stock price at time 1 will follow either heads or tails. Following the one-period binomial model, we're introduced to an interest rate R, and we will see a reference to interest rate throughout this book as it always has relevance to the investor. This is because we may need to borrow from the money market at an interest rate of 1 plus R, but equally we can invest any spare cash we have into the money market to receive an assumed equal rate of 1 plus R. This is important to consider when investing in a stock, as we'll later discuss. We're now just going to run over an assumption we have with regards to R. So the interest rate provides a risk-free rate of return on money invested, therefore it must be greater than the down factor from the tails coin flip. So if this wasn't the case, you could borrow money at 1 plus R and invest it in the stock and always receive a return regardless of whether heads or tails is flipped. R must also be less than the upwards factor of our stock. Otherwise, you could sell the stock and invest that money into the money market and always realize a profit at time one when buying the stock back. This is because the value of your cash will be greater than the possible upwards factor of that stock value. So you're always going to have more money by investing it in the money market than you will from selling that stock. This inequality removes the opportunity for arbitrage in the market with regards to the stock price movement and interest rate. So the simplicity of the binomial model enables us to highlight the relationship of risk-neutral pricing with arbitrage. So in the first part of the book, and in this video, we demonstrate this with a European call option. A European call option presents the owner with the right, but not the obligation, to purchase a stock at time 1 for strike price of K. So we assume that the S1T is less than K and that S1H is greater than K. So therefore a coin flip of tails will deem the option as worthless and heads will return a profit to the buyer of that option as they can purchase the stock at a discounted value of S1H minus K. So the book then introduces us to an example of a stock price movement that is repeatedly used throughout the book. So it would be a good idea to practice writing this out as you study. So our stock begins with a price of four at time zero. There's going to be an upwards factor of two and a downward factor of a half. So that means at time one, if we have a heads coin flip, that price is going to be eight. And if we have a tails coin flip, that price is going to fall down to two. We're also told that the interest rate is 0.25 and in our call option we're given a strike price of 5, meaning there would be a profit of 3 if the coin results in heads, as the owner of the call can buy our stock at 5 and then sell it in the market at 8. So from page 4 we begin to dive into some of the mathematics of our European call option to understand how a risk neutral price can allow us to perfectly replicate our position in the market. So we demonstrate how a replicating portfolio can be set up for a call option based on half a stock. So the theory here is that we've sold a call option for a price of X0, and then we're able to perfectly replicate the call option by purchasing the stock itself. 
The numbers for the price of the call and the amount of stock are not derived in this part of the chapter, but we'll later discuss after page four and in my next video on how to do that. So don't worry too much about where these numbers are coming from just yet, but rather just how we can replicate the security. So we first introduce X0 to represent the initial wealth of 1.2. X0 represents the price paid for that call option, meaning we've sold the option in the market and our buyer now has that opportunity to exercise at time one for a strike price of five. Given our exposure to the call option, we would now want to replicate that position off our buyer by purchasing the stock and also investing in the money market. We're told we need to purchase half a stock to do this. And again, don't worry about why it's half a stock just yet. So as a result, delta zero is 0 0.5 and S zero is still four. We therefore need two to be able to buy half a stock. This means we need to borrow 0.8 from the money market at an interest rate of 1.25 to make up the remaining cash required. So at time zero, our cash position is the initial wealth minus the value of our stock multiplied by delta, where delta represents how much stock we own, and that's going to be 0.5. So as a result, we have a cash balance of minus 0.8, which is what we need to borrow from the money market. At time one, our cash position is multiplied by one plus R, as that is the interest rate. And as we're in debt by 0.8 to the money market, at time one, it's going to become negative one. So now we're introduced to X1H and X1T, and these represent the value of our position at time one, given a heads or tails coin flip. At time one, the value of our stock can be either four or one. This is because we've only purchased half a stock with a delta of 0.5. Therefore, our cash position of heads denoted by X1H is given as half of S1H plus our position in the money market. Our position in the money market, as mentioned before, is negative one as we must borrow 0.8 to fund the purchase of half a stock. And then we multiply that by 1.25. So if our coin is heads, the value of our position is three because we own half a stock of four and then we have to take away one for our cash position. Similarly, if the coin results in tails, we have a cash position of zero as the stock is worth one and then our cash position at time one is still going to be negative one. So both of these values, X1H and X1T, are equal to the value of the call option that we sold at time one as the buyer would have eight minus five for heads, which is three. And then they would have no value if the coin is tails, given the stock price is less than the strike price. So using the one period binomial model, we can see how selling a call option for one stock at a strike price of five for 1.2 can be replicated perfectly with the purchase of half a stock, borrowing 0.8 from the money market for one time period. The relationship between the call option price and delta 0.5 all work perfectly as regardless of the coin flip, be it heads or tails, the value of our stock and money market position together will equal the value of the call option for the buyer at time one. So if the option was priced at 1.21, you could actually sell it and use the extra 0.01 to invest in the money market. Then using the remaining 1.2, replicate that option by, by borrowing 0.8 from the money market to purchase half a stock, thus completely hedging the exposure of the option if the price goes up or down. Equally, if the price of the option was 1.19, you could buy the option by selling half a stock in the market for two. You can invest 0.8 in the money market and 0.01 in a separate money market account. And if the coin is heads, you owe four to the buyer of half a stock sold. And that is paid for if with the option value of three that you bought, plus the 0 0.8, which has grown to one in the money market. If the coin is tails, you owe the stock buyer one. And that is again paid for with the 0 0.8 you put in the money market, which has now grown to one. The additional 0 0.01 in the separate money market account 
grows to a profit of 0.0125. So we can therefore see how if the option is mispriced, there is an instant opportunity for arbitrage by selling the stock or option in the market and replicating the position. So to conclude the first part of chapter one, we've shown some assumptions about our model. These are that the stock can be subdivided. For example, we're assuming we can purchase half a stock, that the interest rate for borrowing and investing are equal, that we can buy and sell the stock for the same price, and that there are only two possible values for the stock at time one, and that's what the binomial model is all about. So these assumptions will be repeated throughout the book, but for now, we've seen that how the European call option can be replicated assuming the binomial price movement. So in the next video, we will understand how the stock delta of 0.5 has been derived and how the price of the option as 1.2 has also come about.